For the estimated 100 million people living with chronic pain, the quest for effective treatments is often paved with higher risk of, say, depression, suicide, and even substance use. Spinal cord stimulation has been a cornerstone of advanced chronic pain management for over 50 years. Recent advancements in sophisticated technology and software are now offering patients the reliable relief they've been seeking. That's so great. Look, let's meet April, who's been coping with her chronic pain for over 10 years. I've had a long journey with chronic pain. It all started with lower back pain. Um, and I had eventually found out I had a kidney infection. And once we got that taken care of, pain didn't go away. I mean, I was on 12, 15 different medications and still in excruciating pain. I'm a mother of three, and at the time they were all in elementary school. There were a lot of times where, in a lot of ways, I almost felt like I kind of ended up neglecting the kids because it, it was so hard to get up and do things. It made it hard on my marriage. He worked so I didn't have to, and so he was hardly ever home. I felt very alone for a long time, um, and it was just a struggle um, with the day-to-day -day life. I was extremely depressed. I had changed doctors, and then that's when I started getting injections, and that helped for a while. Um, it, at first, it would last like six months or so, and then over time, I was having to have them every three months with the injections not working as long, they were kind of at the point where there's nothing more I can do for you. I just finally got to a point where it's like, something has to change. I, I need my life back. Chronic pain is uh, a debilitating pain that has been present for longer than three to six months, um, well beyond what you would typically expect for an injury or, or surgery uh, type of post-op pain. Um, it can be debilitating in a number of ways, uh, whether that's your everyday activities or your sleep or maybe your mood, um, but it is impacting your life in a significant way. So the goals of chronic pain treatment are just to get patients back to living their lives. So that begins with pain relief, that um, extends to improving function um, and not lose any more time or energy on their chronic pain. I was seeing my primary care doctor and I remember getting really frustrated because nothing was working. Um, I just wasn't getting the relief that I needed. And so she referred me to a specialist and um, that's how I ended up with the referral for Center for Pain Management. So I met with Dr. Rutledge and um, after more testing, um, finding out that I had a couple slip discs and uh, my SI joint uh, never really fully formed. So when my back would tense up, it was kind of pinching those nerves and sending a really sharp shooting pain down my right leg. It was really great to finally get that, that validation that okay, there really is something going on. Like, it's not just in my head. So a lot of the patients that come see me, they've usually, or at least felt like they've exhausted a lot of their options. You know, we will use our diagnostic skills to figure out the source of the problem uh, so that we can intervene. I mean, that's what we do. So typically we're talking about advanced treatment options when patients have failed the conservative treatments. Some examples of the advanced treatment options for chronic pain would include things like um, traditional pain pumps, but also the uh, more modern or new uh, minimally invasive spinal decompression procedures we do, our peripheral nerve stimulators, uh, leading all the way up to our spinal cord stimulator treatments. Dr. Rutledge and I came together and decided to discuss further options. Dr. Rutledge suggested that we try the spinal cord stimulator. So spinal cord stimulation is a great option for patients. Um, what it offers patients is an option outside of medicines, outside of things that 
uh, maybe don't last as long or things that haven't worked in the past. So typically we'd offer a spinal cord stimulation when a patient um, has a certain uh, diagnosis. These diagnoses can include failed back syndrome uh, after a spine surgery, uh, CRPS or complex regional pain syndrome after an injury or a surgery to an extremity. Um, there are other neuropathies or radiculopathies that we can also use the spinal cord stimulators to treat. Uh, it involves an implantable device that uh, treats pain uh, centrally at the level of the spinal cord. It actually includes two leads that send stimulation to the dorsal column of the spinal cord. Um, that's that area that carries all of our pain signals up to our brain. I was still kind of like apprehensive, um, but then when Dr. Rutledge mentioned that I could do the trial, that made me a lot more comfortable with agreeing to, to actually try it. One of the most attractive options of spinal cord stimulation is that you do get a trial period with the device. So a trial period can be anywhere from three to ten days. Uh, typically we we aim for the seven day mark to give the patient enough or adequate time to test out the device in different scenarios. So from years of data and research, we know spinal cord stimulation works. There are a lot of options out there for patients. For April, we did decide to use the Prospera from Biotronic. This therapy is a newer therapy with the highest technology um, that we've seen. Uh, with the resonance stimulation that we see with Prospera, we're actually able to get um, broader or even bilateral coverage with single leads that we weren't able to get before. So that means a, a broader therapeutic range for our patients. We now have data that actually shows that the Prospera device and the resonance stimulation that it provides to patients uh, will help eight out of 10 of them achieve their, their pain relief goals and their functional goals. The other reason I chose the Prospera device from Biotronic is that they have a dedicated patient support team called the Embrace One team. Biotronic Neuro's Embrace One Care team is made up of trained, dedicated specialists who monitor patients' therapy seven days a week to ensure that it is working its best. The therapy can be fine-tuned for the best relief via a remote programming session anytime, anywhere. So the Embrace One Care team has been tremendous for my patients and honestly for myself. Um, it gives me the confidence that the device is doing what it's supposed to be doing, uh, that the patients are using it appropriately, that they are meeting their functional and pain relief goals and not falling out of that therapeutic window. So the Embrace One Care team also gives my patients the confidence that their device is working the way it's supposed to be working and that they have a resource that they can reach out to if things are not going how they want them to go. Today, I'm almost a year out from having the Prospera put in. It's been truly amazing to go from hardly being able to move and, and just excruciating, debilitating pain to where I am now. I'm now at a point where I can get out and go hiking. I can go kayaking. I can do all of the things that I couldn't do before. I'm off all my medications, I'm, I'm doing great. This was the best decision I've ever made. I have my life back. For more information on the Prospera Spinal Cord Stimulation System, visit embracelifeagain.com. And as always, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Please stay tuned for important safety information. United States federal law restricts this medical device to sale by or on the order of a licensed healthcare practitioner. The Prospera Spinal Cord Stimulation System is indicated as an aid in the management of chronic intractable pain in the trunk and or limbs. Implantation of a spinal cord stimulator may be contraindicated in patients who are unable to operate the system or who have failed to receive effective pain relief during the trial stimulation or who are poor candidates for surgery. The safety and effectiveness of this device has not been established in pediatric patients or pregnant or nursing patients. Certain procedures may cause electromagnetic interference, adverse interactions, insufficient or excessive stimulation, damage to the system and or therapy failure. Potential risks associated with the spinal cord stimulation system implant and use include pain at the implant site, infection, epidural hemorrhage, lead or stimulator migration, uncomfortable stimulation, and ineffective pain management. Refer to the product instructions for use for a comprehensive list of warnings, precautions, and potential adverse events. 
Embrace One is a support platform intended to help manage a patient's experience with spinal cord stimulation. It is not intended to be used for medical diagnosis or treatment and should not replace conversations with your doctor about medical questions or concerns. For more information, visit EmbraceLifeAgain.com.